For this lesson, we're going to talk about layer streaming. Layer streaming can be used to jump off geometry based on a trigger inside of your scene, which will offload the cost of rendering large, complete forms of geometry that, say, would be a section in your level. So, in theory, think about it if you have something like the Great Wall of China and you walk across that wall, maybe you wouldn't see any of the geometry beyond that wall ever again. And this gives you a simple way to be able to offload those costs without having the fear of maybe rendering something out in the distance that maybe you just don't want to be seen anymore. So it's a quick and easy setup and let's get to it and it should be over in no time. So I have the simple pit example and I have three swatches here. So one, two, and three. And then what I'm going to do is stick a proximity trigger here and a spawn point for that matter to be able to drive the logic. The first thing that we need to do is we kind of need to set up the editor to be able to do this functionality. So if I go to the console and I type in object, layers, and I can see that I have the E underscore object layers activation. I want to set this to true. And while we're here, we also want to go to ES underscore draw proximity triggers. This way, when we jump into the scene, we're able to see the proximity trigger itself. I also want to go up to my tools, level editor, level settings, and I want to set use layers activation. Now, in logic, with Game SDK, you don't actually have to set this. This checkbox is solely to activate it inside of the editor. So we definitely want that, and we're going to check that too. Now what I want to do is drag in a proximity trigger. So I'm going to go back to create objects, and I'm going to go to Entity, Triggers, and I'm going to choose a proximity trigger and drag it out in the scene. So I'm going to press Control and Shift and snap it up into place because I don't have geometry snapping on. And I'm going to slide this over and actually push it down a little bit because we only have to clip the actual box. So if we walk into it, it's perfectly fine. I'm going to change this to 4 on the X and the Y. So then it's definitely inside of there. And now we have our proximity trigger. And what we'll do is we'll rename this to layer underscore trig. And we'll keep it on the main layer as is. The next thing that I need to do is I need to go and actually get some geometry in here. So let's go to Physics, Basic Entity, drag it out in the scene, press Control and Shift, and it'll pop right up where we want it to be. So I have my Basic Entity as it stands right there, and we'll do another. And finally, we will do one more. I'm simply doing this so we'll have different geometry. And in theory, you would have geometry that is totally different anyway. So it doesn't matter what, that they're all spheres. We'll all dump them off based on the layers that exist. So we'll call this one third underscore geo. This one will be second underscore geo. This one will be first underscore geo. And now we have our geometry in place. The next thing that we need to do is create the layers. So down in the Level Explorer, we want to right-click and create a new layer. And we'll just call these as simple as the others. First, second, and third. And we want to house this geometry in each one of those layers. So in Layer, we want to switch from Main to First, Second, and Third. You'll notice it's kind of a pattern. We're just setting all up the logic, and it's not too hard to do. Now that all these set, we need to make sure that we can house the logic. So holding down the space bar, I'm going to click on Layer Trig, and I'm going to right-click and create a flow graph. And we'll call this one Layer underscore FG. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the selected entity, and we just want to make sure that we enable it at the beginning. I like to enable everything that we... I have full control and know it's all working properly. And now what we want to do is we want to go to the engine section. So if we go to engine in our components, we can choose layer switch. And what we want to do initially on game start is we want to make sure that we unhide the main layer. This is what houses all of this other stuff. And if we don't do that, it'll actually disappear and we'll fall through it. And that's definitely not something that we want. And then what I can do is I can press Control c Control v We can zoom in here, and we can say that on Enter, maybe the first layer will 
go ahead and hide. We'll hide that first layer. But if we leave, we want to make sure that we unhide it. So we're going to do this for the other two. I'm just going to duplicate them out. It's a simple flow graph setup. So on this one, I want to enter and I want to unhide it. So we're going to do this with both of these. And then we're going to do the opposite with hide. So we need to switch the layer switch to second and third. And the last thing that I'm going to do is actually add a spawn point right about in between here. So we have a place that we always go to. So we're going to go to others, double click spawn point, and I'm going to add it into the scene. So add this to 180. We're going to snap it down in this area right here so we don't spawn out in the middle of nowhere. And then I'm going to add the selected entity into my flow graph. And on start, I would just want to spawn. So let's add a comment box, and we'll call this layer streaming. Probably we can just call it layer streaming. It makes more sense. Open up the box. Change the color. I prefer to do white. It's just simple to read. And like anything, we want to save and make sure that we have this. And then we can go into our scene. If we go into our proximity trigger, we can see that we're dumping off the layers, the other two. And if I come back in, we have the other two. So this is just a simple way to actually remove geometry inside of your scene. And a good example behind this would be I go and unfreeze everything. Let me grab this designer object. So if I were to make a wall, move it over to, let's go ahead and just hide all of these. This is strictly for a setup purpose. So if I have a wall here, and I duplicate that wall here, so I'm going to go ahead and go to Level, Group. I'm going to group this uh, to Case. So if I go ahead and duplicate this, and I rotate it on the Z, And this is just for a simple concept behind all of this. So we'd move this out. Polygons. And what I'm trying to do here is just basically set up a switch area that we would use. And the idea behind this is inside of this little corridor, you'd be able to switch and they wouldn't be able to see exactly the switch come and happen. So this is a simple scenario where if we were to use the layer streaming, we would have somebody walk in right here, and then they would walk down this corridor, and the trigger would actually be right here. So then being creative, you wouldn't be able to see the switch happen, and you wouldn't see any shadows. So once they walk through, they would go to the second layer. So this would be layer one. There would be the proximity trigger set up with the switch, and then it would switch to layer two. So as the player progressed in this section, they would be able to see it. Likewise, if they walk backward, you want to be able to have a cross compatibility between your different sections of your level. So you would walk back, and they would make the same switch, just like we did in the example, to go and see maybe the previous part of their level two. So this has been a good example on how to do layer streaming, which is great for optimization inside of your levels. And you're able to house this logic in this kind of an example that I've shown right here. So I hope you use this a lot, and especially if you have very, very like narrow levels like Rise or even Crisis in some matters where we were able to offload the cost of the different layers and not have to worry about a real performance hit as the player progresses or digresses in his level for interaction.